but you can have your music. Good morning. Good morning. See if I can figure this out. How many of you believe I can do it? Yeah, I already did it. It's too late now. <laughs> That's why I believe. Good morning. Grab your Bibles. We're back on, on our topic uh, this morning, and, and things are a little bit different this morning, and, and we're just going to embrace the different, okay? In fact, I'll, everything is different. When you look at the candles, what do you notice different about today's candle than all the other candles? It's pink. It's different. The last couple of weeks, we've been talking about uh, all the Advent, the, the themes of Advent. We started off talking about hope. What is hope? Do you remember? I was, I'm always afraid to ask this question because if you don't remember, then I feel like I didn't do my job well. And I also feel like I should be doing angel things here. <laughs> but it's not as cute when I do it. Yeah. What does hope mean? Do you remember the feeling of hope? Right? Remember you get the perfect gift and, and you're except my, my daughter this morning. My daughter says I'm very hard to shop for because I want I, I go buy what I want typically. Men, any, any, men, women, anyone in the room, you do that? Yeah. But the problem is, I also want to be surprised, and I want it to be a really good gift that I wasn't expecting, but I take all the things that I want, so she's uh, very complicated. So this, she said she got me the perfect gift this year, and she showed me it's like this big. I am so excited. I have a hope. Because my daughter is a gift giver and I know she knows me. And I've got this excitement, this belief that God is good and that he gives us good things. My daughter is good and I know she's going to give me something good. That's the feeling of hope. That God is good regardless of my circumstances, regardless of what's going on. I still have this belief that God is good. But we didn't just stop at hope. We also talked about peace. Now what is peace? Right, it's trusting God. It's saying, I don't need to be worried because I trust who God is and I trust the things that he's going to do. Now you'll notice that neither hope or peace have anything to do with our circumstances, do they? Your circumstances can be difficult. And you be going, in fact, one of the things we've, we've talked about is in some ways you can't have hope when you've already unwrapped the gift. If God took care of every problem you've ever had, would you have hope? You wouldn't need it right but we need hope in our day and age because we live in a broken world and things are going wrong regardless of the circumstances in your life you in, in fact in spite of the circumstances in your life you can have hope and peace not just at christmas you can have hope and peace all the time in, in fact you remember this phrase from last week don't worry finish it come on finish it together don't worry be happy Right, that's a song that came out in the 80s and it's kind of a philosophy our culture holds. Don't worry, just be happy. In fact, another movie made us all familiar with this phrase, Akuna Matata. Now, what was the movie? Lion King. Lion King. Now, you all might have thought that Disney invented this phrase. Disney did not. This phrase has been around for a very long time. Anyone know where this phrase comes from or what it means? It doesn't exactly mean what the song says, by the way, just, just to be clear. But there is a clue in the song. There's a couple clues in the movie and in the song about where this came from. Where did this come from? Africa. From Africa. That's right. It's actually a Swahili phrase that means no problems, no troubles. And this idea that very much like, don't worry, be happy, if we just adopt this philosophy in our life, this philosophy of happiness, that if we think things are good, then they will be good. And if we will just decide to be happy. In fact, we have this, this idea, this phrase in our culture. You know, as long as it makes you happy, it's okay. Garbage. How's that philosophy working out? How's the Akuna Matata philosophy working out in our culture? Let me ask you this. Are we happier now than we've ever been because we've decided to be happy? Are we, do we have fewer problems now because we've decided that we want to have fewer problems? No, of course not. 
In fact, during this season, we talk about a lot of sadness and depression showing up around the Christmas season. How can you be sad when there's angels dancing on the stage? How can you be depressed when the kids pull off something as magical and massive as they just pulled off this morning? How can you be sad with all the lights and the decorations? How can depression set in in this time when we've said, what do we say about Christmas? This is the season when everyone is happy. We're supposed to be happy. But instead, and not just during the Christmas season, but just kind of in general, we're pretty sad sometimes, aren't we? Now, do we have reason to be sad? Yeah. I mean, anyone ever turn on the news? And by the way, I don't care what station you go to. I don't care if you go to the most liberal news station or the most conservative news station. What are you going to find on either one? All you're, gonna, all you're deciding between left-leaning or right-leaning news is which news you're going to be more philosophically aligned with bad news about. That's it, right? Both sides will tell us, the world tells us, the reality is, they're not just telling us that things are, there's some stuff to be sad and disillusioned and depressed about. Anyone in this room ever been sad or depressed during the holidays? And not just in January when the bill comes due. <laughs> See, the problem is we've been sold a false philosophy. Here's the false philosophy. Just thinking something doesn't make it so. Right? Just saying, don't worry, be happy. Oh, okay. Wish I had thought of that. And we've been talking the last few weeks about hope and, 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 and peace and, and here's the thing, when you're sold a false hope, and we talked about false hope, and the world sells us false hope, right? The world says what's inside the package is good, but we're afraid that when the world gives us a package, what's actually inside? It's not good. And so it sells us false hope, and when we open it, and it's not what we expected, see, something bad happens. And when you have hope for something, and you don't achieve it, false hope leads to fake happiness, doesn't it? The world says, don't worry, be happy. But then when things happen and we're not happy, we're told, wait a minute, I thought I was supposed to be happy. We're supposed to be happy at Christmas. So what do we do? We fake it. You've never gone to a Christmas party and you are faking it. I'm so happy to be here. No, I'm not. I wish I could be anywhere else. See, the problem is we're told we're supposed to be happy, and when we're not happy inside, but we're supposed to be happy, then there must be something wrong with me, so I've got to act happy. But the more we act happy and the less happy we are, the more depressed we become. Right? How many of you have ever known someone who is gripped with real depression? Anyone ever known anyone who's committed suicide? Anyone ever been caught surprised by that? I have. I thought, man, I, I, I didn't know. How do we not know? How do we not know when someone is so depressed that they think the only answer is to take their own lives? How do we not know that? I'm really asking, how do we not know? Because we fake it. They're faking it, and we're faking it. it we even ask fake questions about how people are doing, don't we? How are you doing? What's the answer? There's only one answer. I'm fine. I'm fine garbage you are bull none of us is I don't even know what that means I know what this means but I don't know what fine means this means I don't know what it means <laughs> I'm fine I, I, ever, anyone ever gotten an honest answer to the question how you doing yeah. it, it takes you by surprise doesn't it how you doing couldn't be worse <laughs> <laughs> you're like I don't know what to do because that's not the convention I don't, there's not a follow-up to how you doing, right? How are you doing? Fine. Me t that's really the answer, right? Me too. Me, everybody's fine. If we all just fake, see, we've been sold this false hope. And the, the more we fake it, the worse it gets. So I want to ask you, can we stop faking it? Is it possible for us to stop faking it? I hope so. Is there an alternative to this happiness philosophy? What's the alternative? Joy. 
Joy is the alternative. Now, how many of you walking in this morning thought that joy and happiness were the same thing? Careful, I'm going to ask you how they're different. So if you didn't raise your hand, you are fair game. <laughs> what is the difference between happiness and joy? All right, that's right. Happiness is conditional. Happiness is conditional. Which means if things aren't going well, I'm not happy. In fact, if someone says they're not happy, what's the first question you're going to ask them? What's wrong? What happened? What's going on in your life? We don't get a lot of, how you doing? Joyful? <laughs> we don't get a lot of that, do we? Maybe that's, what I, that, maybe that's your assignment this week. When someone asks you how you're doing, full of joy, man. I'm full of joy. And you got to say it just like that. How you doing? Joy! Just in their face, joy. They will not know what to do. And then just walk away. I guarantee you're going to make their Facebook page that day for sure. See, happiness is conditional. Joy is not. Joy is something completely different. In fact, joy is the alternative to happiness. We don't light a happiness candle. We light a joy candle. Now, you notice that the candle's different. Anyone ever know why the joy candle is different? Why is it pink? Because they ran out of purple ones, he said. Why is it pink? Isn't that funny? How many of you have ever seen an Advent candle lit before? How many of you have ever seen the pink candle lit before? How many of you have ever wondered why it's pink? And yet we don't know. Joy is different. And you're like, well, tell us. No, Google it. That's what Google is for, all right? Here's what I want to tell you. Joy is different. For the last two weeks, I've been telling you, hope is a gift. Peace is a gift. In fact, Scripture says so. Scripture says, my peace, my hope I'm giving to you. We've talked about that for the last two weeks. I got to tell you, when I started getting ready for this conversation about joy, you know how many scriptures, how many passages in scripture talk about joy being a gift given to us? Zero. See, joy is different. Joy is not a gift that's given to us. It's not conditional. It's not conditional like happiness any more than peace. That's how joy is the same as hope and peace. It's not dependent on our circumstances. In fact, I, I, I want you to grab your Bibles and turn to James chapter 1. I know it's a weird place to start on Christmas. Anyone know what this passage says? This is, I gotta be honest. And I, I know when I say these things, some of you cringe, but it's just, it's just I'm just being real. This is one of the dumbest verses in Scripture. I hate this verse. It makes no sense. Now, I'm telling you, it's also one of the greatest passages of Scripture. And that, yes, they can be the same thing. James 1, 2 says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, what's the problem right away? When troubles come your way. Not if, but when. When troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. If you have an NIV, it puts it a different way. What's it say? Consider it pure joy when you're going through troubles. Yay. See, when it kind of turns it upside down. Happiness says things need to be going well in order for me to be happy. Scripture says, even when they're bad, you can have joy. How you doing? To get rid of your trouble, I want you to consider those troubles joyful. I know. It makes no sense at all. Does it? Does that make any sense? When you're going through a difficult time, here's my advice that I'm going to give you as your counselor when you come and talk to me about all the difficulties and the challenges. Pastor, I've got these financial struggles. Man, I've got this marital problem. I've got this problem with somebody at work, my boss or a coworker. Uh, life is just falling apart. And I'm like, man, you are so lucky. I mean, you should be full of joy. That's what the scriptures say, right? 
Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Let me ask you this. Have you considered joy? Have you considered joy? Here's the real difference. And one of the reasons why the candle is pink instead of purple is different. Joy is not a gift, it's a choice. He says, consider it pure joy. Have you thought about making a choice for joy instead of sadness in your life? Have you ever thought when a challenge came your way, maybe this is an opportunity for me to rejoice in who God is? I'm really asking, have you? Do we usually? No. I mean, when a trouble comes our way, what do we usually do? Why me, God? Right? That's just me. That's my little pity party. God, why me? I'm trying to do everything right. I'm trying to serve you. I'm trying to do all the... I mean, I had angels on the stage. What more do you want me to do? Okay, it wasn't me. That was Amy. <laughs> Took credit for Amy's work. But God, I'm, I'm trying to do everything right. Anyone ever had those conversations? So the question is, how do we do what James tells us to do? How do we consider our troubles and challenges an opportunity for joy? How do we choose joy when life is falling apart and nothing seems to be going the way that we expected? There's the problem right there, isn't it? The way I expected. The problem is our expectations. Now, joy is not a gift, but... We can think about gift giving kind of this way and how joy comes about. So this is not the best example of this. Um, in fact, Jake talked about an example that, that he got. Let's pretend, um, ladies, I'm going to use you as an example. Let's pretend your husband or your significant other, your lo the love of your life, whoever that is, got you a, a, uh, a gift. And it was, um, I was going to have one here, but I'm too lazy. Um, it, it's in a shape like this. It's about that tall. It's about that wide. And it's about that long. It, like, I, what is it? And he, he's no good at wrapping presents, so he just wrapped it that way. And what are you expecting? What's your expectation? Jewelry, right? You're expecting jewelry. And it gives you the box, and you open the box, and, and you're full of hope. You're full of hope because my husband is going to be good this time. I, I told him to go to Jared. Just go to Jared. That's what they tell you to do, right? And you open the box and, and you open the wrapping and inside is that box. It's hinged on the back and it's a gray felt box and it's that long and you open it up. What are you expecting to see inside? Oh, it's so much hope. Ah. Something sparkly, yeah. Something beautiful and sparkly. You open it up and it sucks. <laughs> now, we've already talked about socks, right? Socks are not a gift. How would you respond in that moment? <laughs> yeah, what? I mean, someone's dying today, <laughs> right? Would you be happy or sad? Sad. You'd be, and maybe sad is not the right word. Anger, rage, wrath. Those are the kinds of words that are coming up, right? Why? Because of our expectation. We had this high expectation and the moron failed to at least hit the bottom rung of my expectations, right? Now let's flip that. And this I do have a, an example for. It. Let's a, a few years ago, several years ago, there was a gift underneath the tree, and it was I, I don't even know. I, I'll explain it, and you'll get it eventually. But it was about this tall, but the largest portion of it, like that much of it, was that big around, and it tapered from a little wider at the top to much smaller, and then it had a big ball on the end, and it was wrapped exactly like that. Anyone have any guess what it was? This is a golf club, man. I mean, it was perfectly shaped. I was not allowed to touch it the whole time. Now, I got to tell you something. I don't really golf. Even when I golf, you don't call it golf. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. 
It, Mark Twain called it a good walk spoiled. That's pretty much it. <laughs> what was I expecting to be in that gift? A golf club. Now, would that have been good? Yeah, except I don't golf really. And even if I did golf, one club? Really? I mean, it better be the greatest club ever, right? And some of you guys are going, what is wrong with you? Lots of things. But the problem was, I, I didn't really, I don't use them enough. And so I, while I was thinking that's a good gift, what was going on in the back of my mind? Why? Yeah. Okay, now I got to, and it was not being disguised very well. So, oh, I get to play the, oh, I'm so shocked, right? Ooh, an avocado. <laughs> <laughs> but when I opened it, and you all probably can, there was some foreshadowing going on, know that it was not a golf club. In fact, it was jewelry. It was the exact opposite. But it was, some, it was really cool. It was awesome. It, it, was a, it was a brand new wedding ring. That's pretty cool, right? Because A, my weight has fluctuated. And when we were young and got married, we could only afford like, Walmart was a step up. I don't know if you can buy jewelry at dollar store, but that's kind of what it was, right? And so this was an upgrade. And the fact that it looked like a golf club that I didn't really want or need, but it ended up being something really cool. What did that do inside of me? I was happy. I was excited. I was thankful. There was joy. Now, here's the question, because it really wasn't joy. What was it? Happiness. Because it was a result of the circumstance. Well, I thought I was going to golf club, which was okay, but I got something even better. Which, see, joy is the exact opposite of all of that. Joy is about letting go of our expectations. It's not about, and this is important, finding joy is not about lowering our expectations, as some of the wives are doing right now, as I tell the story about the jewelry box. By the way, man, and my father-in-law did this one year. He gave my mother-in-law a remote control. She doesn't watch television. Don't do that. Don't give her a vacuum. Don't give her anything you think she wants. You know how you find out what she wants? Ask her and get her exactly what she tells you. Unless you are a great gift giver, just do that. Honey, what would you like? Yes, ma'am. Now, don't ask her to buy it and then put your name on it. That doesn't count, although I may be guilty of that at least once or twice. <laughs> We're not talking about setting lower expectations. We're talking about, here's the thing, joy and hope are connected. In fact, that's what we just talked about. If what we hope for is good and we believe that God is good and we can put our hope in a good God who gives us good things. In fact, God doesn't just give us good things. God always gives us better things. Always gives us better things. In fact, turn to Ephesians 3.20 and I'll prove it to you. Anyone know this verse? This is one of my favorite verses. See, here's the point of this verse. If you get nothing out of this morning, walk out of here with this phrase. God never gives you socks. God never gives you, even if you want them, God doesn't give you socks. God, you, you have money to buy socks, right? God will never give you socks. Ephesians 3.20 now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Isn't that a great passage? No matter what you ask for for Christmas from God, it's going to be better than what you asked for. No matter what you can imagine God doing in your life, God can do better. So if you have real hope, See, the problem with the, with the world's thing is they give us fake hope and when we don't, it doesn't live up to even that little bit of hope, then we are de sad and depressed. Well, I'm supposed to be happy and life is supposed to be perfect, but when it's not, everything goes downhill. But see, we can have real joy because we have real hope. Right? Are you ever going to open a present from God and find socks inside of the present? No. Even if I said, God, give me socks. You know what God's going to give you? Anything else. 
Maybe compression socks. That's better. I think. I don't know. Not to me. Still socks. See, you're going to ask for socks and God's going to give you the Ferrari. <laughs> He's going to give you the RC remote control car. He's going to, whatever you're, you imagine. In fact, whatever you imagine, Scripture says God's going to give you even better. But see, here's the problem. We, and, and this is where this whole analogy wears down is because I've been talking about material things. Material things don't make us happy. They do for a for a very short period of time. If you don't believe me, again, and I, I think I talked about this last week, go think about what you got for Christmas four years ago. That thing that brought you so much happiness that you was going to change your life. A, can you even name it? And B, does it still have batteries that work? <laughs> and C, did you consider giving it to Goodwill this year? There's a good chance, right? That either you don't remember what it is, it doesn't work, or you already got rid of it. Or it's out of date. Even if I gave you an iPhone 11 this year, by next year, they're probably on 15 by then. Right? That's all fake stuff. We're talking about real stuff. And Jesus promises us real, abundant joy. So let's see what Jesus had to say. John chapter 15. And yes, I'm about to wrap it up. John chapter 15, and I, we're going to go through 9 through 12, but I'm going to start at 11. Jesus says, I have told you all of these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. The first place we start is Jesus says, I'm giving you real hope. I'm telling you that the gift I'm giving you is a good thing. That the things in your life are going to work out and you can trust me. You can believe in me. You can have hope and peace because of who I am and, and the kind of God that God is. Is he a good God or not? He's a good God and he gives us good things. And when we start there, he says, I'm telling you that when I give you a gift, it's going to be a good gift. And I've told you all of this so that you can have real joy in your life. Joy that will what, does he say? Overflow. So that when someone does say, how you doing? Your answer will be joy. I'm so excited about what God is doing and what God wants to do in my life and in your life. But there's two additional principles that Jesus gives us in order for us to understand how we have joy. He sandwiches joy right in between them. So go back to verse 9. He says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved you. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I've told you that so that you can have joy. What's the first thing that should give us joy in our lives? God loves you and He wants you to stay in His love. When everything else is going wrong in your life, what can you know? God loves you. And he wants you to be in his love. He wants you to know that he loves you and know that he cares about you. God loves you. He says, I'm telling you this. Stay in me. I have loved you and I want you to remain in my love. And because of that, you can have... Oh, I was supposed to put it up on the screen, I think. Nope, I wasn't. Okay. You can remain in my love and you, then, then you'll have joy. But then he goes on, verse 12. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. What's the second part of having joy? Loving, Loving others. Have you ever given somebody a gift that just rocked their world? Have you ever given them and you're like, I know this is going to be the best thing they've ever opened. And they're just, when they open it, it's just going to, it's going to change their life. They're going to be so happy at what's inside of their gift. You ever had that? And then you gave them that gift and it met the expectation. They loved it. You ever given a gift that somebody absolutely loved? That they were just, they, no words could even come out of their mouths. What, now, what did that do for that person? Happiness. What did it do for you? That's joy. 
See, it had nothing to do with what I received. It has to do with what I gave. And I gave something that brought somebody else happiness. And in their happiness, I found joy. See, the part of the problem is the world's telling us you've got to be happy. And if you're not happy, nobody will be happy. And none of us are happy, so none of us are happy. <laughs> if you followed that, good luck. I'm not sure I followed it. But if we will all start making sure everybody else is happy, we'll start loving everybody else. Not, will you love me? I'm already loved, right? Who loves me? God does. And whether you love me or not changes nothing. God still loves me. But I'm going to choose to love you the way that God loves me. And if I, lo if I know God loves me and then I love you and I see the difference that my love can make in your life. Did you see the pictures of people getting water? What happened when somebody got water in their life? Changed everything. Who had the bigger smile? Did you see the picture where Will, Will was, had the water and he was doing the water and the kids had the water under their, the hands under the water? Who had joy in that picture? Will did. Because Will had given that to them. So what's the key to joy? Yeah, it's about giving. Now you do need to receive. What do you need to receive? God's love. Know that God loves you. Remain in his love. And Jesus says, I've told you that so that you can have joy. And then I want you to go out and love other people and spread that joy. Lo joy is not a gift. It's a consideration. It's a choice that you and I make. So here's my challenge to you this morning is consider joy. Can you have joy even though not everything is going well? Yes. Why? Why? Two reasons. Why? Because God loves you and you're going to love other people. And when you love someone, are they mad at you? When you really love someone, are they mad at you? I'm confused. When you really show someone, demonstrate love to someone, are they going to be angry with you? No. Now, you're all getting into the details. Well, I know this one situation. I'm going to give tough love. And when I give tough love, no. If you just love somebody the way that God loves them, what are they going to find? Joy. So here's my challenge to you is consider joy. So what do you need to do this as you walk out this week? It's really simple. How do you consider joy? Find someone to love. I want to tell you, and if you, when you walk out this morning, you see our trees and there's no more angels gifts on the tree because we did, what is it, 62, I think, gifts, which is awesome. And those gifts are pouring in. What you need to go is look at the trees because the thank yous from those families are on the tree now. You know what each one of those represents? Joy. Real joy in a family's life. Not because you got something you wanted, but because you gave something that somebody else needed. Amen? That's real joy. Joy is not in what I get. Joy is what is in what I give. So consider joy today. Let's stand and pray. Father, we've had a busy morning, but it has been an absolutely fantastic morning. Watching little angels in white dance around the stage seeing the story of Christmas, the, that very first Christmas, the greatest gift that's ever been given to us, and seeing that that gift transcends time. It still impacts us today. It, it, it's the real gift that allows us, as, as was demonstrated, bringing water and food and, and the gospel and clothes to people who need it. Father, there are people in our lives who need to be loved on today. They need to be loved on in the next 10 days between now and Christmas. They need to be loved on between now and the end of the year. They need to be loved on into next year. Father, show us, each one of us, how much you love us, and then let us consider it joy to love on the people around us. To know that you don't give us socks and you don't want us to give anybody else socks. You want us to give them love. Give them what they truly need deep down in their soul. 
Father, let us find a way to share the love of Christmas this week for your glory and all God's people said. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Tell a little kid how awesome they did today. Have a great week.